Welcome to the Distributed Control and Automation Framework video series. My name is Matt Pollack. I'm a Senior Systems Engineer in the Embedded Systems Group at National Instruments and one of the developers of the framework. In this video, we'll be giving a brief introduction to DCAF, what it does, how it does it, and where you can get it. Let's get started. The Distributed Control and Automation Framework, also known as DCAF, is an open source LabVIEW framework for building robust, feature-rich control applications in less time by combining out-of-box functionality, a configuration-based workflow, and clear points for extension. The framework is built around a scalable and extensible plug-in architecture for building control systems based on single-point data movement. Everything is accomplished via plug-in modules that are either provided by NI or created by our users. These modules can provide single-point I.O., data processing, data transfer services, etc. We provide a set of plugin templates to simplify the creation process. We also permit the reuse of existing plugins. So the idea here is you build it once for one project, reuse it for all of your other projects without having to do any additional effort. We also provide a feature-rich configuration editor to define and configure your plugin parameters, and also to permit operators to make changes without ever touching your source code itself. As part of the framework, we also provide rules for correct by construction software. We've already done the hard work of ensuring that the framework enforces proper programming practices, as well as being optimized for real-time execution on compact RIO control systems. We also provide timing and error handling hooks that can simplify the process of building these features into your embedded applications. Let's take a look at an example here. Let's just say that we have to do some PID control off of some inputs and provide some control signals as output. In a typical system, we might be pulling in input data from an HMI. We might be getting real-world data coming in from an I.O. module. And we might also be receiving some communication information via Modbus. We do some processing based off of that data and the processing results would then get forwarded out to a number of locations. Maybe updating the screen on the HMI, maybe providing a hardware output via an I.O. module, maybe reporting back out via Modbus, and probably even logging the data down to a TDMS log file. Now each of these individual pieces is something that is not particularly hard to build, but as you get a more complex application, it quickly becomes apparent that there's a lot of duplicate effort if you have to build 10, 20, 30 of these kinds of systems. You're dropping a lot of the same code each time. And there's a lot of opportunities for bugs, mistakes, or improper programming practices to creep in. And that's one of the areas where DCAF can help. For us, all of the different blocks here would be considered a module within DCAF itself. We provide a number of pre-built plug-in modules to the framework that National Instruments has built. These range from protocol gateways, example Modbus, Profibus, Ethernet IP, etc., hardware abstraction, data processing, and data services. So pulling in data from the FPGA or the scan engine or shared variables, we can take care of that. Data in or out via these industrial protocols interaction with other code running on the system via current value table, aka CVT, scaling, alarming, a simple sequencing application, as well as places to put that data, a data logger to TDMS, access to those pieces of data via web service, transferring data in between systems via engine-to-engine -engine communications. All these come built into the framework, and over time we are going to add more and more of these modules based off of the application needs that we see. Not to say that you can't build your own. If you need a fixed logic plugin, a plugin that always works in the same way with the same set of inputs, building a module for this is extremely fast. You can take the processing VI that you have, run it through some fancy LabVIEW scripting utilities that we provide, and you'll get a fully functional processing module that can be integrated into your DCAF system. Another key part of the DCAF experience is the configuration editor. 
we provide a fully featured configuration editing experience out of box with decaf. Each module that is created creates a plugin for the configuration editor specific to that particular module. For example, for a PID module, you may have inputs for the P, I, and D parameters as well as the set point. And the output, of course, would be the output of the control logic. So let's take a look at how all of this works. There's a lot of pieces here, so we'll go step by step through it. We start in the configuration editor. This is where we define the modules that we're going to use in our system, the targets that these modules will run on, and the mappings between the modules to move the data around. The output of the configuration editor is going to be a human readable XML file that can be transferred over to the execution target. This human readable configuration file contains almost everything necessary to control the operations of our system. The idea here is that if you want to change what your system does, you change this one configuration file, deploy it to the system, and then it's good to go. No code edits required unless you're adding additional modules, in which case the editing of a single VI is required. Over on the controller, inside the main VI, you'll have an engine execution loop. Over on the controller in the main VI, you'll have an engine interface loop. This is responsible for launching and interacting with the decaf engine. The decaf engine, shown on the bottom half of the screen, is what's responsible for actually calling the modules, taking care of any data interchange between the modules, error handling, fault recovery, and system housekeeping. So once the execution engine is in its run state, the engine will call input method for each plugin, then process methods for each plugin, followed by the output methods for each plugin. It's possible to have more than one execution engine running on the same target. Each execution engine is single-threaded to provide maximum reliability and determinism on the system. Having more than one engine essentially lets you assign different sections of your control logic to different processors on the system. Each method gets called sequentially, and any data interchange between them is handled by the framework. Now, this is a very important piece because this ensures predictable execution, eliminates the possibility of race conditions, and also minimizes data copies and maximizes performance. We've squeezed every ounce of performance we can out of this framework, and if you've used the framework correctly, your systems will take advantage of that fact very easily. Important thing to note on this diagram is any of the code shown in blue is code that is provided completely out of box with decaf. You don't have to worry about it. We've already done that hard work for you. We've built the configuration editor. We've built the execution engine. We've built the framework. Items in yellow are framework plugins. These are pieces that are provided by each module to implement its specific functionality such as the specific editor window in the configuration editor, the specific implementation of what it should do at runtime, as well as the specific configuration parameters that need to get passed to the system. The code in green is going to be code that runs parallel to the framework. And that can be any other functionality that you might want in your system. Uh, for example, if you wanted to do something uh, like waveform acquisition and processing and data streaming, that may be something that's better suited outside of decaf, but it can coexist with it. We do provide sample projects for the engine interface loop and the main VI, such that you probably don't have to write any of that yourself. We provide it for you as well. And one of the very nice benefits of a framework like this is it means you ha only have to do very minimal design work for things like system configuration, because we provide the editor and handle all the business logic there, State management, we have a state machine within the execution engine to make sure that nothing is running while we're in a configuration mode. We have error handling hooks within the framework to easily provide an error handling and reporting mechanism. And we also handle all the data sharing between pieces of the system. Now, data communication is traditionally one of the more challenging uh, design exercises when building an, an embedded system. We've already done the hard work there for you. We also simplify the design of plugins. We do provide sample project and template for these plugins, 
such that you essentially just have to fill in the blanks to tell us exactly what you want your plugin to do. We take care of the rest. Of course, design work would still be required for non-framework tasks, things that run parallel to the framework, additional code that runs on your system besides what we provide. Additionally, DCAF is suited for both beginner and advanced developers. For a beginning developer, they can reuse existing plugins for a complete out-of-box experience. No major LabVIEW development required. If they also want to create some simple processing plugins, our tools are very good for this purpose as well. This would take the LabVIEW effort to a minimum in terms of how to do the coding and keep the effort on what configuration do you want, what specific mappings are required in this specific system, what set point to use, what channel to read from, what channel to output to. And they could also develop some small functionality parallel to the framework as well. A more advanced developer, rather than only using existing plugins that come out of the box, can utilize the framework tools to create their own plugins, their own custom logic, their own custom processing for whatever their application specific needs happen to be. And there's real power in this framework because that means you only have to build a module for the functionality pieces that aren't already part of the existing module set. If you're going to be doing multiple projects that need similar type of processing, uh, this investment in building these modules can be easily amortized and give you some really nice return on investment. An advanced developer might also customize the editor, the engine, or any of the other code. And they can do this because it's an open source framework. We publish all of the code, and you may even contribute to the direct development of the source code on GitHub. So how to get started? Take a look at our webpage. It's at ni.com slash decaf, D-C-A-F. There you'll find our community page, which includes videos like this one, documentation, a hands-on workshop, examples, and quite a bit more. You can install the framework by going to VI Package Manager, search decaf, and install the decaf core component, as well as any decaf modules that you wish to instantiate in your system. If you find this framework interesting, you might also want to look at ni.com slash reference designs, where NI Systems Engineering posts other pieces of code, other examples, other frameworks that we're working on. And finally, I'd like to close with, this is not a product. It's an open source project that depends on the contributions of our user community. You can find support on the community page at ni.com slash decaf, and you can report issues or bugs directly to the development team, including myself, on GitHub. We're at github.com slash labviewdecaf, and all of our source code is there. You may freely look at it, edit it, push changes back to us, and you can feel free that doing so won't impede your rights. Uh, we are under an Apache 2 license to be as permissive as we possibly can here. We welcome contributions from our users. The f entire framework was built based off of the feedback that we've seen from folks like you trying to build good embedded systems. Keep the feedback coming. Come to GitHub, help us out. 